Hey y'all, it's Leslie, and I'm here with my March Design Team project, and I'm super excited to show you, and I hope that you're excited too when you see this. This album is for baby book, but it could be used for so many other purposes. The Design Team project for this month for Genevieve Designs uses the Paper Dream mini album template, and with the Paper Dream, Dream mini album template, you get the Paper Dream bonus, which includes this background paper, background paper, this one, and then those. They're all included with the Paper Dream template. So I used those, and I used a lot of the pages from the template. Also, I used the Everlasting mini album. And if you ordered the bundle Everlasting, and it says bundle, then you get both the Everlasting and the mini everlasting templates. Both of them say mini album, mini album, but they're two different sizes. The one we use this month is everlasting. You can find Jennifer's playlist below. Finally, I use the muted backgrounds. And the muted backgrounds, you should print this index sheet uh, for from your printer. And that way you can see what the colors look like and how they're going to match your specific project. Uh, I printed this on two different printers and I got two different results. It's crazy. Okay, but I got a lot of pretty papers out of it. Okay, now using uh, those templates, I have created this mini album. I have created a set of videos, a series of videos that take you step by step and page by page through this mini album. And it is will begin next week and I do each page like Jennifer does. I do page one in the back, page one in the front and, and so on and, and keep going through the album. That's because there's so many pages that you're printing or using or cutting uh, or tracing that I didn't want you to get confused. So today I will take you through one small part, one small project in this album. If you want instructions on how to make the tassel, I'll be glad to show you that. This element I will be showing you soon. And all of the other elements created with this mini album I will be showing you very, very soon. Okay? All right, let's start. Hey y'all, it's Leslie and I'm excited to be here today. Uh, I have my project ready for uh, March for Genevieve Design's uh, design team. And this month, we were supposed to use a combination of the Paper Dream mini album template and the Everlasting mini album template. So, when you buy Everlasting, you can either buy the bundle Everlasting, which includes the Everlasting and, in the back, the mini Everlasting. Or, you can just purchase the Everlasting on its own, or you can just purchase the mini everlasting on its own but if you want both you have to choose the one that says bundle this month I'm just using everlasting and we use the paper dream template which looks like this the paper dream template includes some bonus material you get this bonus background which matched perfectly with the paper line I'm using um, watch when you print your papers uh, your color papers because they may turn up different colors depending on the printer that you use. Both of these were printed on two different color printers. There's also lined paper, which I'm using in my album, and this lined paper. And then you could also get it in the dyed papers. I'm also using Jennifer's muted backgrounds. This is a separate file you can purchase. And depending, again, on your printer, um, you want to print this index page first so that you can figure out which ones match your project. Okay, let's look at the gorgeousness now. Yes, this is my soon-to-be grandson. That's his filter sound picture. And I'll come back to the front in a moment. Let's go with the closure first. The closure is made using some little beads like that. Yes, and then on the outside, I have done my daughter and son-in-law's initials because that is something that um, was from their wedding. So what I've done here is I've used some sorry ribbon to cover on the spine, a piece of the 
uh, bonus paper. I'll explain why the sorry ribbon's here um, in a moment, but I really love the detail that it adds to the spine. It also gave me a place for this tassel to tie. I used a piece of sorry ribbon through the top. Yes, I got some bells, a couple of different bells hanging inside here with three different colors of sari ribbon. And I did a piece of sari ribbon through the top, around through, you know, put one this way and one this way in the spine, and then came underneath and tied it off in a knot so that those pieces would look like they're just part of the tassel. And that kept me from having to use one of those book rings or something else to hold my tassel on. On the front, you see, I have, uh, oh, the closer is done with the Tim Holtz clips, too. I did get those. And then I just tied a piece of sorry ribbon on there to, to hide the clip. I didn't really like the way the clip looked with what's going on on the front, so I did like that. Okay, on the front here, I made a window, and I go through um, this album page by page, front and back, just like Jennifer does, uh, because there are so many pages involved, it would be very confusing to do it all now and list it for you. But I will have a series of videos coming up very soon that has every page in there for you, including how I did the cover. But the basic is I used the Everlasting Cover and used the cover of the Paper Dream to cut the window. So that's basically how I did it. A uh, couple of little embellishments. In another video, I'm going to show you how to do this embellishment. Um, then, on the inside, you can see, oh, it's a shaker. You see that shaker? It does shake in there. Then on the inside, this is probably my favorite element of the entire album, and one of the reasons that I created this page this way. Jennifer made a little magnet floating element um, in the center of her page and she used magnets to make that element stay on the page and I thought oh my goodness what a brilliant idea because you can take it off and use it as a magnet on the refrigerator so this page becomes a magnet for the refrigerator it comes off glues uh, not glues it it has a magnet that holds it in place here and then the element comes off and you're like oh no but that bow well the bow is magnetic. That's why it turns. And the reason it's magnetic is because you can add another photo on the other side when you get tired of that one. Look at that. Isn't that cute? They're so cute. I just can't wait. Yes, that's my son-in-law and my daughter. Yeah, he's like my son. Okay, and then I left the top open so that you could change out the photos and we can put a real live picture inside of there and sweet baby face yes okay set that aside so it doesn't get messed up for a page boy i have a note have sticky notes everywhere telling me what pages these are because i added these pages in after this is the little page 16 booklet and this is page 26 from the paper dream page 16 from Paper Dream booklet with page 26 from Paper Dream as the mat to make these pages. And that goes inside this little pocket. And again, I go through how to make all of these pages in the videos. So uh, unless I've changed something from those videos, uh, you'll see that in the process. I did turn this pocket around. It was in this position and I just um, took it off and put it back. I'm really good at taking things off um, and covering up mistakes. Every single page, including the cover and embellishments, I've made a mistake on. But I've undone it, done it again in, in the right way without throwing away anything. So if you'll follow along my series, you'll see how to correct mistakes too. This is some of the journaling cards that goes with it. Here's a hidden pocket um, using the page seven, uh, excuse me, page five as the um, mat here. Um, I trim just a little bit off of it. And this is page 11 from Everlasting. This is page five from Everlasting. Okay. The inserts are the same. 
They have muted backgrounds with the wood print over them and then the bonus paper on the inside. And that's the same for all the pages with inserts. Side inserts, I should say. They all have inserts. On the back of page one, you have a flip pocket here that has a tuck. The page, Paper Dream, page four, one of the mats for it is a four by six photo. So you see these photo mats throughout this album because it's such an easy way. I made my pockets be roomy and there's a way to do that by adding your score tape not close to the fold. You want to add it closer to the outside of your um, tabs and that way your um, pocket can be a little roomy. I like that instead of going in with my bone folder and stretching it out because it let, really lets you have way more items in there. Got some little jingle bells throughout, journaling cards that make tucks everywhere. So again, I have um, another pocket here. This is Paper Dream 4, page 4. Paper Dream page 4. Um, then here is another page 11 from Everlasting. I'm telling you, some of the pages aren't. A, and this is page 5 from Everlasting. Some of them I remember. Some of them I have written down. This is uh, the page 2. And on page two, uh, I used a different sort of base. I've taken, this is why we have the sorry ribbon going in between every page and before and after the first and last page. And that is to hide the way you have to do this binding, which I decided after the fact. The filming got messed up for this one. I don't know what happened to that video, but I have in here, you will see where I have cut the binding. Do you see that little white piece right there? That white line? That's where the blue hinges, I printed them in blue, were and I cut part of it off to make it fit this page. This page is actually just this tall. Right. I added in this to give me some a little divider section in between the front and the back but the binding only goes to this point this high so I had to cut off I just knocked the bell off <laughs> I had to cut off part of the binding strip at the top the hinge at the top so to hide that I was going to put a little embellishment there but to hide, to hide it I thought oh how cute would it be and it gives me an actual uh, purpose for my a tassel to attach to so it solves so many problems um, by doing this plus I just think it's absolutely precious you could always add in more uh, inserts just in the traveler's notebook style so there you go over here on this um, side again this is your um, the pocket here and your first pocket is the everlasting page 12 and 13 and it made the little envelope with a couple of little inserts in them. Now I tried to use uh, most everything that I printed uh, in some sort, way, or fashion. So some of the tabs make it in as just a little marker. Some of them get words on them. Some of them just get put in. And then on the back, this is another um, of the muted backgrounds and here is another one that I added a little tag label. I also have a video of how I made these labels. Do you see that? It looks like wood doesn't it? Oh you're not going to believe how easy that is. It's so stinking easy. It was actually a mistake it's so easy and then I was like oh no I love that let's stay with it. Okay we also have a little uh, faux envelope here. This is the large tall envelope from the Paper Dream mini album template. But if you notice, it's got this little decorative edge, just like the Everlasting template. I took Everlasting page nine and laid it on here. It's the belly band. And then it, the belly band wasn't quite big enough to cover the whole thing, so I just made it go straight out on the edges. Those little things are actually extra wide. 
was so cute in it. Okay, and so that makes a good little place for photos. Okay. And then when you flip over to the back, you have a couple of inserts here as well. First off, you have page uh, 16 from Paper Dream. And again, I used page 26 from Paper Dream, which is the mat uh, for this booklet. I used it for my papers on the inside using some of those uh, bonus papers that's included with the Paper Dream. Here, I also have uh, a bow. I've done this before on my channel in another uh, video, but on these, I printed the Everlasting template, one of the pages that had the smallest bow. I printed it at 25%, and it makes a one inch bow, or less than one inch bow, actually. Okay, then there's also another one of those page 11s. Love that. And here's a hidden pocket back here, made a tag out of the little um, Paper Dream page four photo mat. It's more of those little wood. I just can't wait to show you those. Can't wait till you see them. I've already shown you. You just haven't seen it. Okay, there we go. And then here, this tucks into the front pocket like that. Um, it also can go like this, and we'll just leave it like that for a minute. Here we have one of the many tall envelopes that I added just a little heart and a little twine because in this pocket, which um, is page nine, the small pocket, it, it goes all the way. It would go all the way, so I didn't want it to, and that gives us a way of knowing, hey, there's something in here. And then inside, I made a little booklet. This is just scraps, scrap paper I had uh, from the muted backgrounds that was white on the inside. And then this is some of that scrap uh, lined paper. Maybe a hidden little journaling spot. I've already picked out the uh, lullaby that I'm going to sing to him. It's a, not traditional. And... Um, so I may write that inside of there. I just had that thought. <laughs> okay, on this page, we have the belly band from the Everlasting Mini Album template. Some of the journaling cards. I um, fussy cut one and, and used some scrap to put a little element here. These open, and then you have a page element here. This page element opens like this. And then it opens again. If I can get it all in there, there you go. To create all of those pages and places for photos. This pocket here flips like this. Places for photos on both sides. And then here you have a little tag that's paper clipped on with a with some of the um, scraps and one of the scraps and journaling cards here, and then this is another piece of scrap designer paper. And instead of you know put it in the well, will I ever use this now again pile? I decided to put it in there. That's more real estate for photos there. Here we have another pocket, uh, obviously from the everlasting and then this as well okay this actually i believe is from the front cover i believe that's where this came from this is the hole that we cut from the front cover then this goes like this and then all that wood matches up again okay here's another one of the side inserts done in the same manner okay the back of page three is a little simple in comparison to the front of page three um, I found this little foot oh you can't even see it I found this little foot paper clip in my stash well why not on a baby album so that clips these items together this is a little uh, flip out that uses the name, uh, this was from the cover of the uh, Heaven Scent by Prima. 
uh, paper pad and I used an eight and a half by 11 paper pad for this. Uh, I would have used more if I used uh, uh, pattern paper for a lot of these little inserts and things, but I used one eight and a half by 11 and had maybe six sheets left over, I think. There is the paper pad that I used. This is a faux envelope that gives you plenty of spaces for journaling. I will go back, I think, I don't like this white. Whew, I didn't rem remember leaving that. So I'm gonna leave this out so I can go back and add some ink to this. And I may add my faux wood technique to this. This is another little pocket here, just a simple pocket. I believe this is page 11 from the paper dream. Not exactly sure. Okay, and then I'll put this here so I won't forget. On this page, we have um, a little tuck here so that you can tuck in a photo. Here we have a little paper clip. This is one of the heart paper clips I'm going to show you how to make. A little heart paper clip. I'll show you how to make them that in a video. And then here is some of the faux wood that I've done. Um, and I did that on the back of some of these little flip tags. And this gives you a way to tuck something under here and tuck under here if you'd like to. Here is a pocket. This pocket actually folds out. And this is one of those page six or page seven pockets. I, I love those so much. I use them so much in this album. This folds out and here you have a pocket here with another tuck. And on the tuck, again, you have one of those uh, paper clips that I show you how to make. And I glued the legs of this paper clip to the uh, banner and that way it would hide some of the ugly legs because those heart paper clips don't make the prettiest legs now you'll try you'll see this and you'll try to pull this but it doesn't open but you see there is something written here so it's going to clue you in to do this you're going to turn the page Oops, need to have to tuck in this correctly there we go much better then you have this pocket and on this page this opens and now you can see whoa you can't see because i'm not on screen there we go i have to look, do it kind of crooked um this pocket folds like this and now you can see the words and this has a tuck Trying to do it one-handed. Okay, now move back down. Now this is the page that we were just looking at that had the um, that had the paper uh, photo mat uh, with the paper clip on it. This is the mat for that. Okay now on page four of the mini album and this one was added in after the fact because i actually made a three-page album but when i was doing the three-page album i was going to use a four-page spine well i used a four-page binding um part here the four pages for the hinges but I used a six page album spine and I already had it all put in, all connected, all inked up, all beautiful and decorated um, with the, the paper and everything. And so by golly, I wasn't going to change that. So what I did was I added in an extra page. So Jennifer has shown you how to add a page in using um, just the hinge on the base here. I created a hinge and glued it down and then added this page on top of it because mine was going to be a substantial page. 
here we go with one of the paper clips again and this is a faux envelope with a place for uh, photo and journaling okay this is a photo map here this one is some leftover I had I made some faux wood this was my first attempt I didn't like that after I had done the after I had done these little uh, hole reinforcers oh that one flew um, then I wanted to do it on the paper well this was my first attempt and that wasn't so great one more this one's page 15 from everlasting some of them I know by heart it's a lot of a lot of real estate in this book another one you can see that I was using up whatever scraps I had because these aren't going the same direction <laughs> And here's wood on the outside, and this is the bonus on the outside. Well, that's because I did, used what I had for page four. I tried to use up scraps that I had laying around after I finished the album to use for page four. So this is just basically scrap material. Then on the back, this is my grandson's name, and or it will be. Here's a little um, tag that I made. This is using a... Uh, yes, a journaling card. I put some lines on the back. Fussy cut some items and put on there. And that will tuck in just like that. This is a flip here. And this is a flip um, with a tuck under here for a photo. Some of those mini teeny tiny bows again. Here you have, um, this is the Paper Dream page four. And it's used as a flip here. And I matted it with a piece of scrap here. So it's like a one inch piece of scrap. And this was a piece that wasn't quite tall enough. So I used it um, as well. So the two pieces together made the perfect opportunity for a pocket. So I've got tags in these little pockets. Plus it'll give you an option for putting a photo in there. You may have to trim the photos a little bit for some of these items in this book, but most of all, you're going to get a ton of four by sixes in here. This is another Paper Dream page four. And again, with a one inch piece here, this is using a piece of scrap that I have a, a left over, just a strip. And then I made a tag to go inside. Here we have another one of those page six pockets, another tuck, and a piece of scrap paper. Put it in there because I can put a photo on that. Maybe a couple of photos if I trim them down. Okay, and that goes in there. This goes in there. These fold up. There's magnets in this to hold that pocket closed. Finally on the back cover yes all of this within one mini album every bit of it I'm sorry it's taken so long but look how much real estate there is for photos and for crying out loud when you get a mini album that has a pocket that's this thick in the back you know there's something good in it and there's two items that are really good in here first of all is a little box that I'll show you how to make today and this is a box that holds all of the journaling cards. Some of them I've add, added uh, hole reinforcements and made into tags. Some of them I left as is. A couple of them I added vellum to to make it a little less stark in color. And then I also added cut aparts from the paper collection in here. So they're all in here and their purpose is for the mother to add where she wants within this mini album. I didn't want to put the card for first stuffed animal in a section or on a page that maybe she had all about his first Easter. She had all his first Easter here, but then there's one of these that says first stuffed animal. That wouldn't work. So let her put these where she wants to. And so I made a little box for that. This little box also holds three before photos. So any three before photos she has left over 
when she trims or cuts them or prints them with her um, sprocket or selfie or, or whatever little printer she does, then she can put those in this. And when I sit down, this is the purpose of this. When I sit down with a mini album, somebody's always coming and sitting beside me and saying, oh, I want to look too. Well, this is where I go open to the back cover. I whip this out. Oh, sorry about that. Whip this out without knocking you in the head. And then I give this to them and say, well, here you go. Or hand them the album and you hold this one. And this gives you a waterfall mini album. Yes, it is a six page waterfall mini album that when you open it, uh, my plan for this, my idea for this, is this is a perfect place for all her month photos. You know that one that they take and they put a one month sticker on them and then a two month sticker. Well, here's one month and you open it and now you can see ooh, the waterfall down here once you get it open. It's kind of a secretive waterfall. And there we go. Again, trying to get it out of... These are full... Uh, page two of the Paper Dream mini album, which is matted with a six by six piece. And then I put um, just a piece of scrap um, here. I trimmed the tabs a little bit and left sticky tape so that I could put in this sorry ribbon to make this element decoration. And all inside one little mini album here. And it goes inside this pocket, which is made with a page six and a page seven. Actually, two of them because you need one on the inside here. They're on the back to make the full box. So there's two page sixes, two page sevens. And then this tucks in here. You also could put a photo back there. It's a perfect place for another photo. A little hidden gem back there. Look at that. And then this goes inside the pocket as well. Yes, I thought of everything. <laughs> kidding, I didn't. There we go. Isn't that so stinking cute? So stinking cute. Hey y'all, I'm going to show you how to make the box for the journaling cards. They're all on one piece of paper, so I cut these out and then I just punched them with my corner rounder because I also bought the three by four pack of journaling cards from Prima. This is all with the same paper collection, um, heaven sent. These are going to be given in the album. What we're gonna do is make this little box and I'm using page eight of Paper Dream, you're gonna print two of that or trace two of the pocket, the square pocket, I should say. Okay, and then we are going to attach it to each other. And I've done this before where I've used, you know, two things that have tabs, two of the same thing that have tabs, and you can make a box out of it. Well, and on this one, we're gonna do the same thing, but I really want a lid because I don't want these cards falling out, you know, everywhere. So, you know, like that. <laughs> I'm going to make this box and then I'm going to make a lid. And the lid looks like this. The lid will go over the top of the box. I guess I can throw that away. It'll go over the top of the box like this. And it will create a closed box. Isn't that cute? Where we get this from is here on your envelope template. template. On the envelope, we're going to take this part and we're going to cut off this part then I will take this part off of the envelope now let's look at it from side to side this is the score line that she has inked when you print it okay this top one here okay this is a score line I did it is one half inch toward the bottom of the envelope from the score line that Genevieve Designs has. There with the lid, 
to make it be square. Okay, so let's put everything together. Okay, to take it, uh, to put it together, we're going to pull one of the score mark, score uh, tape backing off, and I'm going to take the bottom one off first. I'm going, to, I'm going to attach my bottom with this one laying on the table, and I'm going to keep my side tabs for the top piece here um, kind of folded out flat. The bottom piece I'm going to fold in. I'm going to put it so that this this piece here on the bottom is going to hit my table like back here and then I'm going to slide it to this one there we go and when I get there I'm going to use my thumb and kind of press it to then I can stand it up put my bone folder inside and give that bottom a little press then I can take the others and I've taken the tape off of this side. One thing I need to do before I close up the box is put a piece of tape over the magnet. I'll explain about the magnet in just a moment so that when things are sliding in, it can just slide right over the magnet and then get caught on that. I hope I was on camera, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna piece, put a piece of tape on the magnet so it slides in. And I like to hold it up on the, the table so that I know that the bottom is square and then I can fold the side tab over. Do the same thing with the other side. There we go. Now I can make sure that everything is completely connected really well. Including the bottom. Okay, we're going to add our lid to our box. And once you get the journaling cards or whatever you want to place inside of your box in there, you're going to take your lid and I, I removed a piece of score tape here. Uh, you're going to take your lid and you're going to put it here and make sure that this half inch, which is going to be the part that goes over the top of your journaling cards or whatever you put in your box, make sure that, that the score line for it is just a little bit above the cards. I think you can see that difference there. I'll come back about my magnet because it's going to show a little bit bit or it's actually going to be on the very edge here and so I'm going to make some sort of embellishment and put the magnet on the top and have an embellishment cover the magnet that way I don't have to have it on the inside and have to mat over it or something and it's really close to the edge here and by putting it on the embellishment that'll make it work so much better now back to what we were doing here the lid and we have it set the way we want it and I'm going to just um, pull the score I'm holding the box and the lid at the same time and I'm going to pull one side of the score tape off well normally normal people can do it without <laughs> losing the whole setup they had but me with MS fingers, it's gonna bump around. But I tell you what, I have learned a lot of, of techniques of getting through shakes and bumps and rattles in my artwork. And when your, your fingers don't work well, I have, I have learned a lot of techniques to kind of get me through. And crafting is a good pain therapy there we go goodness gracious why in the world it didn't want to come off and there's our lid now I'll make a decoration that will have our magnet so that it can stay closed okay I'm back embellishment I'm going to do is uh, to hide my magnet and just to review if you've forgotten in the last second or two my lid's not going to cover my magnet quite enough so, what I'm going to do is, look at there, I could put this flower down. I took the center out of it. This is one of the Prima flowers. And do you see that it's a little off center of my flower? Well, I could just slide my flower 
and reposition it, that magnet is strong enough just to hold. Same thing with my lid. Okay? So I'm going to attach the flower to the lid. I'll attach the magnet to the flower and then it will be one whole piece. And to cover up the magnet, tiny little burlap bow. Won't that be cute? Well, I think it will be. A bow for the center of the flower. I'm going to get the score tape on the magnet, get the flower attached, and get the fiber tack for the burlap bow and get it attached and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm working on this embellishment to hide my magnet. And it's going to work great if I, um, you know, use the flower. So I've gone ahead and I've attached it to one of the flower layers. I decided to take the flower apart because I didn't like the way the burlap bow, sorry about that, didn't uh, cover up the magnet on top. What I'm going to do is put this score tape and I'm going to put the magnet here in between the two pieces of the flower. So there was two layers to this flower and basically what I'm doing is putting the magnet in between just like that. Now the magnet is well hidden in the flower and the burlap bow can sit just like that. Is that cute? And then when you look at it from the side like this, you don't see the magnet under there. That's, I was still seeing the magnet. It's all about hiding that magnet for me. You know, I wasn't going to hide the magnet in the embellishment, but what you've got to do is you've got to let your paper talk to you. You've got to let the project talk to you. And when you make a mistake, because listen, I've been making mini albums and crafts for decades now. When you make a mistake, just slow down, back up, it's always fixable, most always fixable, <laughs> or you can cover it up. Or if you mess up, it's paper. Do it again. Just try again. And don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be negative telling yourself, oh, you can't do that, or that doesn't look good, or look, you messed up, and yours doesn't look like so-and-so's. Don't compare yourself. One of the hardest things is, is to t turn off that negative Nelly that's inside your head. You just need to tell her to shut up, okay? 20 days later, when the glue comes down, I'm so sorry about my phone. Now that is so stinking cute. I just can't even. That just absolutely is so darling. Do you see? Oh gosh, so stinking cute. I love it so much. And I love it with the wood and it's just, plain like this. Oh, I just, I just absolutely adore it. And so now, once my bow dries, oh, <laughs> I forgot. I hey, you have to attach the flower to the lid, for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to let this bow dry. Then I will use some Fabri-Tac or some uh, score tape to attach the flower to the lid and then it will be done <laughs> and here we are isn't it precious and you can open it from up here or you can open it by pulling on the bow I think it's just so cute and then all the little cards are inside okay this one has taken me um, a few days because my MS has been um, really bad but it is absolutely gorgeous. And then, see, come back to the front. I love it. I love it. I love it. On the front, here's all the embellishments I did for the front cover. Most of it I had from my stash. I collect um, white and off-white uh, flowers that are just the flat petals or that are the full-size flowers, full petals full flowers like this or like this little tiny ones I, anywhere I see them I get those and that way I can use them here I found a collection that had some green in it which is perfect for this but everything that was blue and color these and the ones you saw on the side I actually dyed those using some um, of Tim's, Tim Holtz inks and water and then I found these and they were in my collection 
what do you think do you like it please like my video and um that way it lets youtube know that you like it and and lets me know that you were here also it lets jennifer know that you like her design team project for this month and i hope that you subscribe while you're here if you haven't subscribed if you have subscribed click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button and then that way you'll be notified of my videos i do hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed making it it is it is a labor of love and it is really not that hard i take you step by step and show you all the boo-boos on the way i hope you have a great day and i will see you soon thanks for stopping by